All right, so we are continuing using behavioral skills within our training. And we've gotten to the point where we want to provide feedback. So we can't just um, approach feedback where we're only going to tell our trainees what they're doing wrong. Um, that is not the best way to learn. Uh, as we know, uh, reinforcement is going to provide better results than a, a punishment only strategy. And as behavior analysts, we shouldn't be using punishment even with our trainees unless we've tried everything else. And this is the only last option, which it never really is. Okay, so we should be using our own guidelines and ethics when we're with our trainees. So when we're providing feedback, we want to provide descriptive praise, let them know what they're doing well. We do want to identify areas for improvement. And it's really helpful to provide like a written summary or a reference that they can come back to so that they know what it is that they need to work on. So when we are delivering feedback, um, this is a, a good way to, a good task analysis for delivering feedback. You want to begin with positive or empathetic statements. So, hey, it looked like you had a really good session or, or even the empathetic, right? Like, oh man, uh, it, it looked like things were uh, a little bit rough today. I understand sometimes things are like that, right? Um, you want to specify what was performed correctly and also what was performed incorrectly. You want to provide information on how to correct that behavior, that incorrect behavior. How do we do it better in the future? You should be soliciting questions about the feedback that you're providing. So your trainee has the opportunity to ask you questions, get clarification. Um, and, and then you want to make sure that you're informing the trainee about what you're going to do that, hey, I, I want you to focus on this for the next week. This is what I want to see at the next observation. Or you, you've got some expectations outlined about how you're going to follow up. And then end with a positive or an empathetic statement. Again, like, I know you're trying. It's okay. We'll get there. I'm here to support you. Okay. So how do we support that proficient performance? It's the same kind of things that we do with our learners. Again, we want to use the science of behavior analysis with our trainees, not just our, our clients or our learners. So we want to identify what are some possible reinforcers for your trainee. Um, some trainees are very motivated by that praise or recognition. Some might just be doing it just to get your hours signed, which is fine. Um, maybe there are other things that uh, your trainees are motivated by. And this doesn't mean that you're like handing out like gas cards or anything like that, because that can get into some multiple relationship and ethical issues. But try to understand why they are pursuing this and how you can praise them and reinforce them in a way that is meaningful and reinforcing to them, right? You do want to provide that descriptive praise. So instead of, you know, watching somebody uh, in, in their client observation and then just saying, good job, that looked great. Provide very descriptive praise. I love how you started with a preference assessment. It's really great how you were able to fade those prompts within session with that learner. Um, I like how you were able to um, maintain a calm environment as you were helping that learner to de-escalate. Whatever it is, right? Be very descriptive so they know what it is that they're doing well. And you want to, especially in the beginning for skills that might be new to the trainee, you want to keep the rate of reinforcement high. You want to make sure that you are providing positive feedback frequently. Um, and even if there's a lot that they need to work on, you are highlighting the things that they are doing right and the things that they are doing well from the beginning. 
so that you are building this rapport with your trainee. And, um, and then over time, you can also start targeting some of those maybe more difficult to uh, change uh, or more difficult to learn skills that your trainee will need to work on. We also are expected to correct the non-proficient performance. So we can't just tell somebody, don't do that because that's not very helpful. <laughs> um, instead, we want to try to better understand why it occurred in a different way. So asking the trainee questions about the situation is a really good place to start. Try to understand what they were thinking when they performed the skill in that way or when they um, wrote it up in a certain way, wrote up a plan in a certain way, or what they were trying to accomplish when they selected that particular um, avenue or intervention. And allow them the opportunity to explain what they do know. Through this, you may be able to to identify where there are some learning gaps. And that can help you then focus on the supports needed to correct the non-proficient performance. This also gives somebody a chance to be heard and to um, feel like you are not there in just a punitive sense to tell them what they're doing wrong, but instead really there to support them and help them learn. And I've seen this, um, the examples that are coming to mind are uh, behavior technicians, um, but the supervisory actions is still the same. Um, those technicians might have had different experiences in different settings, and they might be implementing something that was absolutely appropriate for a different client or in a different setting, and it worked there. And so they are just generalizing the skills that they know to this. And so we want to, instead of just say, no, don't do that, we want to be able to talk about why it might have worked in that setting, but it's not appropriate or best practice in this situation. Why you might select an intervention for a particular skill or a particular client and why you wouldn't select that. So that will help us provide that deeper understanding of, of the science and the decision-making process instead of just saying, no, that's not how you do it. Because let's be real. All of us, speaking to all of the behavior analysts listening, all of us have had different experiences. We probably take data slightly differently. We probably prioritize different things. We probably run uh, our, our go-to preference assessment might be different, right? We are all still qualified and yet we have different experiences and different preferences in the way we do things. And we have decision-making strategies that we use that help us determine why we would do it in this case and not this other. So that's where you can really help your trainee learn how to make those decisions instead of just saying, well, this is just the only way you can do it because it's not. There's very little that can be said <laughs> is always one way or the other, right? Um, we do want to, when we're correcting non-proficient performance, we do want to specify, uh, provide a specific description. So I want you to uh, work on increasing the descriptive praise that you're giving, or I want you to shorten the latency between when the learner performs the skill and when you deliver the token. Um, when you're providing that specific description, only focus on like one, maybe two things to change at a time. You want to prioritize the skills that will either have a really big impact for that situation or on that trainee or skills that are easily mastered. Um, just like when we're selecting skills for our learners, we can't work on everything all at once. We need to start with a couple of more basic things and then we can build up. Um, 
And we might want to select things that are going to be easily mastered so that the learner has that success in their history. And, or we might want to select items that are going to have a really big impact for that learner. So if they are able to communicate, that is going to be a huge impact for them across their life. Great, so we might target that to begin with. For our trainees, if they can reinforce correctly, they can use reinforcement correctly, that will have a big impact on everyone they're serving. So maybe that is where we want to start, is fine tuning their reinforcement skills. We also, as trainees, want to provide the supports to succeed, to help our trainees succeed. It's not enough to just tell them what they did wrong and how they need to change it, but we also want to identify, well, what are the barriers for success and what supports does this trainee need in order to be successful? So like I said, for me, my goal is not to have people come into supervision and finish supervision by a certain time. My goal is that they can demonstrate all those skills. So if it takes longer, or if we need to spend more time on certain things, or they need a little bit more support in certain areas, that's okay. As long as we're making progress and I'm able to fade out those supports over time, then that's where we want to be. <laughs> 